Hi, this is Jesse. I'm going to show you how to get started developing PhoneGap apps for Windows Phone. First up, you need to go to PhoneGap.com. You can find these instructions there under Getting Started. Windows Phone. The requirements are listed here. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need to do is install the Windows Phone SDK. I'm not going to explain how to install Visual Studio. The steps are outlined very clearly by Microsoft and the tools are free. So we're going to move straight on to the next step which is getting the PhoneGap code for Windows Phone. Switching back to PhoneGap.com the download link here is going to link to a, a zip download of the full source code. Uh, currently this zip file is pointing at version 1.2 and it hasn't been updated for uh, our changes for 1.3 so I'm going to go directly to the source and get it. Here's the repo at callback slash callback windows phone on github.com and it's recently been tagged 1.3 so we can download this zip file here. So this zip file contains the full source code for PhoneGap for Windows Phone. Uh, since this is a getting started guide, I'm just going to show you how to get started with the PhoneGap starter.zip file. This is a template for Visual Studio. And all you really need to do is drop this into your documents. The full path is documents Visual Studio 2010 templates slash project templates. If we just drop this file in there. We don't unzip it or anything. And then we start Visual Studio for Windows Phone. And we go New Project. We now have a PhoneGap Starter template. So out of the box we get a working PhoneGap application. It has a www folder as you would expect just like all the other devices. Uh, inside there you'll find index.html. Index.html includes PhoneGap 1.3 JS which is also part of the project and we have a little getting started code here so if we just run this in the emulator We have a running PhoneGap application on Windows Phone and it's outputting the version number of 1.3. Looking at the source code we can see console.log on device ready. The device ready event works exactly the same as it does on the other devices. So we add a listener for it and when it happens then we're just going to output window.device.phonegap which is the 1.3.0 version. If we want to do our typical uh, phone gapping, we can just go navigator.notification give that a run and we can see a Windows Phone styled alert box. One really nice thing about working with Visual Studio and PhoneGap uh, for Windows Phone is we've redirected all the console log from JavaScript so this will actually show up in the output of Visual Studio so if you need to to check that something is being called correctly 
you can you could actually see it right here in the in the output of Visual Studio. So this is a huge help for developers. One important thing we have to be aware of is the way that Visual Studio projects treat content. So if we look at the www folder here, we can see that index.html is specified with the build action of content. This instructs Visual Studio that this should be wrapped with the rest of our application and deployed to the device. If I choose to add an existing item and I'll grab an image here, I'll get rid of that alert. I'll throw an image tag in here. And I'll run this on the emulator. We can see that the image itself didn't actually show up. So if this is the case, it's probably a situation where you've just added an item, but you didn't specify that you want it built into your application as content. So just changing that to content and running the application. And there's our image. So you now have enough information to get started developing PhoneGap applications for Windows Phone. Here's my information. PhoneGap.com is your normal source for all news related to PhoneGap. You can check out the docs at docs.phonegap.com. You can follow the wiki at wiki.phonegap.com. My blog is risingj.com. And I blog frequently about Windows Phone and PhoneGap. And on Twitter, I'm Purple Cabbage. Cheers.